Assalamu alaikum sharing with you another topic about globalization. I think you have already an idea what is globalization but this is just a sort of review from your readings or from your learnings before. When you see this image, the iPhone, I think you have already an idea when we talk about globalization. What about this one? The battery from China, the LTE modem, the storage from Japan, the camera also from Japan, the display, the RAM, Samsung from Korea, the A9 processor, the terminals, the chassis, and range of frequency transceiver. So, I think in the drawing, in the images, you are familiar with these terms. Kung saan galing na mga lugar na dyan din. Medyo marama rin ang China. So, we move on. So, this is the world. The globalized, globalized world. You look at the image. The contemporary world. Then our focus questions. You have to de will define globalization. The dynamics. So what are the dynamics of globalization? The theories of globalization the perspective then we will differentiate later about westernization as well as localization now to its definition when you talk about globalization according to Harvey in 1989 this refers to the time space compression time space compression Parabang, because of this, the world is becoming smaller and smaller. Nakukompress. Then, si Gip Glippin in 2001, according to him, globalization refers to the integration of the world economy. Integration of the world economy. So, the interconnectedness when I talk about the world economy. Then another, according to Scott in 2002, globalization is de-territorialization, de-territorialization or the growth of supra-territorial relations among people. Okay, so that's according to Scope. Then Stager, he also said that re globalization refers to the expansion, expansion and intensification of the social relations and consciousness across the world time and the world space. So the world space. So yun yung sinasabi ko, the interconnectedness interconnect among nations. And because of this globalization, the world is becoming smaller and smaller. Parang nagsisring. Shrinking and shrinking yung world because of this. So in addition, according to Friedman, in 1999, globalization is an inexorable integration of markets, transportation systems, and communication systems to a degree never witnessed before in a way that is enabling corporations, countries, and individuals to reach around the world farther, faster, deeper, and cheaper than ever before and in a way that is enabling to the world to reach into the corporation, con countries, individuals farther, faster, deeper, cheaper before. So, parang inulit lang according to Friedman. 
According to Guess, globalization refers to the worldwide intensification of interac interactions and increased movement of money, people, goods, and ideas within and across the national border. Parang globalization is a borderless world. Parang ganun yung sinasabi, borderless world. So if you notice to the different authors about the meaning that they give on the globalizations, they are interrelated, of course. Then what about the dynamics of the so-called, the key dynamics of the so-called globalization? First, time space compression. Time space compression. According to the theory of the time space compression, the rapid innovation of communication and transportation technologies has transformed the way we think about the space or distances and time. Can you think of an example of of time space compression? I think in your mind, meron na. Patingnan nyo ito. Because of those gadgets, because of those technology yung ang time compression doon natin makikita. Get siguro natin yan. Yan. When it comes to transportation, bilis na. Noon, bugsay-bugsay pa ngayon because of that. Nasa himpapawid. Second, the flexible accumulation. So, ito yung second dynamics. Reflects on the fact that advances in transportation and communication have enabled companies to move their product their production facilities and activities around the world. Why do you think companies would want to move production facilities around the world? I think you have also an idea about this. Okay? And of course, parang kikita sila, parang dadami yung kanilang customer, of course, sa buong mundo yan. So, tingnan niya ito. So, once again, flexible accumulation. Yan. We have the so-called also under flexible accumulation, the offshoring. I think familiar with the term. May mga offshore, outsource din ang pangalawa. Offshoring is the relocation of business process from one country to another. Typically, an operational processes such as manufacturing and supporting processes such as accounting. So marami mga offshore dito sa Pilipinas din. And karamihan from China. Kaya nga iba, mga illegal, mababalitaan na lang natin. Then the next is outsourcing, familiar also. Outsourcing, this is an agreement in which one company contracts its own internal activity to a different company that's outsourcing. It involves the contracting out of a business process and operational and or non-core functions to another party. So, that's an outsourcing. Once again, an agreement in which one company contracts its own internal activity to a different company. So, now you know what is outsourcing and offshoring under the dynamics on flexible accumulation. Accumulate para mas mapabilis. Makuha, mapabilis, ma-accumulate. Especially yung mga products. Ayan, gamit lang yan. Ang grabe na, ang bilis-bilis na. Yun yung makikita natin na kagandahan din sa globalization. Unlike before, na kung may mga products, mga services, ang tagal-tagal. Ngayon, isang pindot mo lang, nandyan na. The third dynamics is increasing mig migration. There is an accelerated movement to people both within the countries and between countries. How does this affect the Philippines? I think alam natin yan. We have a lot of migrants going to the different countries all over the world. Kaya nga sinasabi, there is an accelerated movement of people both within countries or between countries. Tayo, isa tayo dyan. Ayan, pumapalis, nagmamigrate. What is the main reason? Of course, for greener pasture. Okay? 
So according to the study, 5,460 OFW left the Philippines every day, daily, that was in 2017. Now, 2024. So, ibig sabihin, mas marami pa. Okay? Not only 5,000 daily, ha? Daily. Then, 2.3 million numbers of W, according to the Philippine Statistic Authority, that was 2018. Now, is 2024. More than 2.3 million na rin. Okay. The next dynamics is uneven development. Take note of this uneven development. Although many people associate globalization with rapid economic development and progress, globalization has not brought equal benefits to the world's people. Why is this so? Bakit? Ano sa palagay nyo? Nandyan pa ba yung sinasabi natin? The rich become richer and the poor become poorer. Pwede ba yung mangyari because of this uneven development? Yes, this it can be. Okay? Yun yung problema. Ayan, may mga mayayaman. Uneven. Once again, na, sinasabi natin, uneven development. Iyan. Grabe. Ngunit, meron ding makikita tayong ganyan. Dito nga lang sa atin, parang sa atin, no? But I think this is in Manila. Kita natin yan. Kahirapan between the Yaman asaka yan, uneven development. Klarong-klaro yan. That's why kung may World Summit dito hinihild sa Philippines, ginagawa tinatakpan yan ang mga daanan, linalagyan ang mga malalaking streamer tarpuli para hindi makita yung mga mahirap na, kalag na sa yung kanilang kalagayan their situation so that's the problem but not only in the Philippines but that's all through all the world especially to the third world countries so there are also theories of globalization so, so that's more on dynamics Huwag kalimutan ha, balikan natin, more on dynamics. There are four. So once again, what are those four? Iyan, time-space compression. Then, flexible accumulation. Then, increasing migration. Then the number four is uneven development. So that's are the, those are the dynamics. So, what about the theories of globalization? So, the first theory, according to Rusto, the modernization theory. So, based on the stages of economic growth and modernization, before we have the traditional society, then nagkaroon ng precondition for takeoff, then take the takeoff, drive to maturity, and the age of mass consumption. So, you look at this diagram. From traditional society, ayan, limited technology, static society, kasi traditional, trigger the external sa taas, influence the interest market, then pataas siya, infrastructure installed, and the emergence of political and social elite. So, this is the preconditions for takeoff. Commercial exploitation, agricultural, and extractive industry. Tingnan niya anong naidudulot. Then the investment of the, the manufacturer is 10% of the national income. The development of the modern social, political, and economic institutions. So take off the development of the manufacturing sector. So pataas ng pataas siya. Then to the maturity, the drive of maturity. So now there is a development of wider industrial and commercial base. Then hanggang the high mass production. Pero dito sinasabi dyan, the exploitation of the international exploitation advantage in the international trade. 
So, yun yung according to this theory ni Rostow. The more the modernization theory based from these stages. Next is the dependency theory according to Frank. If you look at this diagram, the periphery, the semi-periphery, and this is the core, the center, the good, goods and resources, then vice versa, papunta din, the goods and services. So, this is an approach based on the periphery's dependence to the core. This one, then the core exploits the resources in the periphery resulting the periphery's dependence on the core as imports the core's finished product. Okay, so this is according to Frank with this dependency theory. The next is the world systems theory according to Wallerstein. So there is one world according to him, complex world systems theory in which nation states complete for in which nation states compete for capital and labor so there's a competition with this world system theory so one world complex system theory so the glo the global economy of market the global economy is a market system with a fluid, with a fluid and dynamic flow of countries and economies from periphery to semi-periphery to core. So, yon according to Frank. So, ito yon naman ang from periphery to semi-periphery to core. So, you look at the arrow. Yan. Paulit-ulit, pabalik-balik. So, that's the world system theory model for according to Wallerstein. The next is the information arbitrage according to Friedman. To understand the complex system of globalization, a multi-lens perspective is needed. Multi-lens. Ibig sabihin, tingnan mo sa maraming uh, lenses. So, the six-headed dimensional information arbitrates is the best way to see the system of globalization. So, titignan mo parang uh, environmental mapping. Tingnan mo dito sa six globalization system. Politics, the culture, national security, the environmentalism, the technology, and financial market. Ito yung tinutukoy that the six-dimensional the in, Dimensional information arbitrage Na tingnan mo with multi Lens perspective According to Friedman So what about the perspective on globalization? The first perspective is the super globalist perspective What about the super globalist perspective? So, this is an approach which sees globalization as a new epoch in human history. So, this epoch is characterized by declining rel relevance and authority of the nation states brought about largely through the economic logic of the global market. So, that's the so-called hyper-globalist perspective. That's the first perspective of globalization. An approach which sees globalization as the new epoch of human history. Okay? The second perspective is skeptical. From the word skeptic. Okay? This views current international processes as more by fragmented and regionalized than globalized. Kaya nga skeptical. Regionalized to globalized. Then current processes show at best a regionalization. Authors with a skeptical perspective reject the notions of the development of global culture or the global governance system. Kaya nga skeptical, so balik tayo dito, or balik tayo dito sa regional. Kasi skeptic nga siya sa global. Okay? So yan. So, balik tayo sa ating region. 
Then, what about this perspective? Transformationalist perspective. This perspective differs fundamentally from either of the two perspective. So, parang this is a combination. There is no single cause. That is the market or economic logic behind globalization and the outcome process of globalization is not determined. Kaya nga, transformationalist transform missionalist perspective. That's the number three perspective. So, once again, there are three perspective of globalization. So, what about these two terms? Globalization as well as westernization. When we talk about westernization, this is the process by which societies come under or adapt western culture. So, take note, adapt western culture. When you talk about westernization in areas such as industry, technology, politics, economics, lifestyle, the law, the norms, the mores, the customs, traditions, values, mentality, perception, the diet, clothing, language, the alphabet, religion, and philosophy. That's more western, on, on westernization. So, we adapt the western culture sa itong lahat na ito na ating binanggit. So, therefore, we, we say that modernization means westernization. That's according to Kamel Paglia. So, once again, with this, with those scenarios, modernization means westernization. And we have another term, Americanization. That's why tayo, mayroon na tayong sinasabing Filipinization. So, ito, Americanization. This refers to the import by non-Americans of products, images, technologies, practices, and behaviors that are closely associated with America and Americans. That's why it's Americanization. I think, and intindihan naman natin yan. Then, what about these two terms? Globalization as Glocalization. What does it mean? Globalization as glocalization. Kanina, modernization as glo means globalization. Ito naman, glocal. Global and local? Okay. When you talk about glocalization, this is a simultaneous occurrence of both universalizing and particularizing tendencies in a contemporary social, political, and economic system. So, kaya nga, global. Globalization. Once again, as I told me, simultaneous occurrence of both universalizing and particularizing tendencies in a contemporary social, political, as well as the economic system. So, yan. Tingnan ninyo yan. The result of globalization. We are familiar with the image or this uh, image na ito? The result of globalization. Kaya because of this, when we talk about globalization, there are advantages, may mga disadvantages din. Ang mga tao, nagiging tamad na rin. Whether we like it or not, the surreal talk. Isang pindot lang, isang order lang, ilang minuto nandiyan na sa bahay mo, ayaw na magluto. Because of this. Yes, may na magandang na idudulot din. Pero karamihan, ang mga tao talaga nagkaroon ng problema. So with that, I'd like to say thank you. I hope you learned something. We have also another topic in globalization. Ito, karagdaga na lang din. God bless everyone. Dalaygon ang Diyos.